Hey. All right. Good. Cool. There we go. I2B2 update. That was, uh, that was fun that Sean went through my 40 minute lecture in like seven minutes. That was, that was fun to watch. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to give an update on what's happening um, in I2B2 right now in the core platform. Um, in the upper right corner, I just added this yesterday because I was having fun. Eugene was telling me about Bing's new image creator. So I said, show me a picture of the future of I2B2. And it did that. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't even get I2B2 right. I don't know. <laughs> um, so I'm Jeff, Mike Mendez, and Rita Mehta, and Sean Murphy. We're together kind of the core team of I2B2. And <clears throat> we've seen variants of these slides several times. There are many, many people involved in I2B2 project. It's also used by over 250 hospital systems or hospitals around the world. <clears throat> this is from a list that Diane put together based on the best data she could find. And it has about 70 hospital systems, so probably about 250 hospitals, but it's missing people. So if you are not listed, if you don't see a dot on the map for you, let, let us know. I want to update the map. Um, so this is where we are in our development, short, short development roadmap. Last time I talked to you with an I2B2 update, we had just released 1.7.13. And um, between today and next month, we're going to be releasing the I2B2 1.8 preview. We had we started adding things to 1.7.14. We had so many things we were adding, we decided let's call it 1.8. And then we realized it was too many things to get done by the time of the conference. So we're releasing a couple of the things in a preview form as a beta for anyone who wants to try them now. And then <clears throat> winter, just after you know the new year and whatnot, we'll get the actual release out. Um, so 1.7.13 had a lot of stuff. We're a little behind, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it. We did SAML. We upgraded ACT. We improved security. We improved patient counting scripts. Um, it was it was a good release. Um, so 1.7. I'm sorry, 1.8 preview um, is not going to include the full server. It's not going to be like a full update. You'll be able to download two components. One is this modern redesigned user interface. The current I2B2 web client, very, very functional, but it looks like it was written in the 90s. It uses YUI 2. It has a lot of like light blue. It, it looks a little outdated. Uh, so the, um, the team, the I2B2 web client team, which is a whole different team, I think I forgot to put on the acknowledgement slide, um, created this new client that is just so much better. You can resize the panels, you can, it's more readable, the icons are better. And we're also releasing the I2B2 on OMOP support, which I've talked about recently, so I'm not going to spend more time on that. Um, the new web client preview, uh, it looks functionally a lot like the old web client. So we've got on the left, we've got ontology browsing, we've got a workplace where you can save old queries and patient sets for easy access. There's the query history where you can look at look back at all the queries that you have access to see, which is by default your users queries. On the right, there's a bit of a redefined layout for the find patients. Instead of having panels going across the screen, you have um, kind of a, you read it down. So this is like the top panel is Alzheimer's disease. And then the second panel is below that it says and male. And then the find window is much the same. So it shouldn't be confusing to people, but it is, it is kind of a layout refresh. Um, Anapama has a presentation on this tomorrow with a demo and everything. So I'm not going to go into it more here, but uh, it's pretty cool. Um, the I2B2 on OMOP, I just talked about, so I won't belabor that point, but the views and the ontology will all be available. It's, it's in our GitHub now, but the final version will be available early October. Um, and the I2B2 web client preview, you can do right now. You can go to i2b2.org slash software. There's a new little link for launch 1.8 preview I2B2 web client demo, and it'll take you to a a version of the new version of the web client using the 133 patient demo data that is already on the website under the old web client. 
um, you can go to community.i2b2.org and under the download section, you'll see a link to download the source code if you want to install it yourself. So that was, um, that was we just got that up like two days before the conference. So that is a fresh and we'd be excited for you to try it. Uh, the 1.8 release, the, <clears throat> the full 1.8 release will include those two things. It'll also include some important bigger features, which Mike Mendez is gonna go into detail on. I'm gonna give you just like the 100,000 foot view. There will be a job scheduler. We want a job scheduler because we have lots of derived fact things that we want people to run. We want people to count their patients. We want people to compute loyalty scores. We want people to run computational phenotypes. It's a lot of work to have someone run stored procedures every time the data is refreshed. So having a scheduler that can just do it for you is going to make everyone's life a lot easier. Uh, there's new data export functionality, which Mike will talk about. Um, there's ontology store, which Sean alluded to earlier, that will let you just click a button and get ontologies um, rather than go through the whole download, extract, run ant script, set up database connections thing. Um, the Snowflake support that Missouri has, University of Missouri has developed, the MOSIS team, uh, will be uh, included in 1.8. And uh, also, of course, lots of bug fixes. So that, that's what's coming. I always like to show the links because the, for like getting to I2B2 stuff, and people have shown most of these before, but if you can get the slides later, it'll be there. Community.itb2.org, itb2.org slash software. There's a Google group that you can find through the community page um, that is, it's called install help, but it's help with anything. It's not just installing it. There's a GitHub, there's a Jira. You can submit issues. You can also submit pull requests if you have features you want to contribute back to the main code base. We do like having community contributed features. The last few releases, we've, we've had some major features that were contributed by the community. And uh, this, Mike's gonna go into a little more detail on data export and the job scheduler in the last five minutes. So, okay. Oh, okay, yeah, let me do that. I can share them. Oh, oh, okay. Does I2B2 integrate with Epic at all? That's a good thing for Mike to talk about too. Yeah. The I2B2 itself is designed to be very flexible. You can integrate it with uh, whatever you want. You can write ETL processes to get data out from your EHR. Um, but there are a lot of Epic users who run I2B2, a lot, a lot. And Mike runs the ETL working group. And so I'm sure he has some users in that working group who can answer questions on getting it running with Epic. Um, is the templated language for IRB protocols using I2B2? What data sources are available? What are the costs? That <laughs> I wish I could answer that offline because there's there's a lot there's a lot there to unpack. I, I2B2 is not data that you download. I2B2 is a platform. It's an ontology. It's a way of integrating your data. But there are certainly there's certainly useful resources out there on getting your data into it on writing an IRB protocol that uses it, and we could give you some cost breakdowns. It's, it's open source, but of course there's cost to anything. Um, Actually, one of the questions at the end. Uh, sure. This yeah. is the last one, too. This is the last one, I guess. For this point, anyway. Can I2B2 data be accessed via R or SQL? That's actually good. You should uh, listen to this. Yeah, okay. yeah. yeah, yeah. Let's, let's <laughs> let Mike talk. Mike then. Okay. okay. All right, cool. Hey, welcome, everyone. Uh, so yeah, so what do I have, five minutes, Ryan? Okay, um, so yeah, we really wanted to get 1.8 out, uh, but then some issues all around kind of made it more difficult. But anyway, so there's two new components that we're gonna have, it's the bulk exporter. So you're probably familiar with the export XLS, which is a great tool, it's on the web client, and it lets you basically export your patient set as a file. Uh, but everything's done on the client, it does everything through the XML that Sean was talking about, which is good. Uh, the bulk exporter, oh geez, no. <laughs> yeah, smile, yeah, smile for the camera. Uh, so the bulk exporter uh, is actually does everything on the server side. So you can basically, um, it's all gonna be web services, so you can uh, schedule everything. Uh, but being an AI uh, environment, I wanted to talk about the exporter for 
first, because as we heard from Zach's talk, you can take a, a set and have it just be analyzed. Uh, I would not recommend sending it to ChatGPT, just use our own <laughs> one uh, because of HIPAA. But anyway, so one, one example, a uh, use case of the export is you can actually just like create a patient set and export it. Uh, you can then take that exported file, you can go into R or SAS and analyze it. Or what you could do is uh, you could use the scheduler uh, because at, for me, I only have one GPU. If I want to try to analyze something, it's going to take a while. Uh, and in tomorrow's talk about the AI that uh, Nicholas and Chris and I are, are working on, uh, you'll, sit, you'll hear how long it takes to is analyze data hours. So with the scheduler, what you could do is originally we were thinking, okay, loyalty cohorts, you can take derived data, make more data into the active V2, but you can also use the scheduler to uh, basically take that patient set that you exported, analyze it, and then send some results out. And that court scheduler might take 800 GPU hours. So it could take a while. So that's just another use case of the quartz uh, schedule. And because I know that we basically had limited time, uh, my original talk was gonna kind of be more technical in this, but I think this was probably a little bit more useful because tomorrow we're gonna get really into the technical of like large models and all that aspect. But yeah, so the, uh, the quartz like to be too is all part of the CRC. Um, utilizes that it, uh, you can run stored procedures if you wanted to or you can have it run other um, other cells like the new uh, ITP2 AI cell um, which isn't going to be part of the core it's going to be like a separate cell that you can download and utilize um, but yeah so the exporter and of course everything runs on all three platforms and it should run into the snowflake one also um, so I just I think I went through all this. This is yeah. Basically, the code piggybacks some of the uh, breakdown code. So, any of the uh, when you ex when you create an export of what you want, it could be you can tie in multiple tables, or it can just be the whole patient dimension, or it could be an OMOTH view. So you have flexibility of what you want your data to, be, to look like. And I think that's it. I think uh, I might have a minute or two. Great. <laughs> Okay. Uh, oh, so there was that one question. <laughs> so data be accessed via R or C clone? Uh, yeah, so you can actually, so you can export the data through the current way of export XLS and you can analyze it through the R, or you can do it through the new, uh, when 1.8 one, one comes out, using the export and you can export that data and analyze it with R or SAS or AI or anything. Uh, what was the other question? What directions does ITP data flow? In other words, does the data flow from the ITP to inference on each? I think that's a Jeff question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll just read the question. Which direction does ITP2 data flow? In other words, does the data flow only into ITP2 from the EHR? Can it also flow into the EHR from ITP2? Can data obtained from ITP2 interfaces be used for clinical purposes, or is it only for research purposes? The, the design of ITP2, the implementation of it is to get data out of EHRs and then analyze it for research. You could use it for clinical purposes, potentially. There's a lot of governance around that that one would have to think about, but um, it's, it's about aggregating data into a data warehouse. Um, there have been some projects that have done things like using fire to push data back into ITV2. Um, that those are kind of community projects, not part of the core platform direction, but that's been that's been experimented with also. Okay. All right. Well thank you both. We'll give them a round of applause.